Hello, welcome aboard. It is, oh, September 6th, 2021. This is a 1963 Impala, Impala, however you want to say it, floor pan. This includes the inner rockers. So there's gonna be a video on what I did to try to get this thing to fit in that car over there. So a couple things I already know is this is Repop, made in Taiwan. I got it from Classic Industries. Uh, a couple things I already noticed is those plugs, those floor pan plugs. See how those are kind of oblong in the back of the rear seat pan? These four up front are basically ovals, which don't match the original, which is over there that I cut out. So that's one thing I've noticed so far. Second thing, this doesn't come with any uh, brackets for the rear seat to mount. And the rear armrest, this is the old pan that I cut out. You see there's a, a bracket here for the armrest. And then there's a bracket here for the uh, mount the rear seat. And then there's another bracket on the front here for the rear seat, I believe. So those brackets don't come on here. I'm gonna to to cut those off and weld those back on, get some measurements and do that. Uh, they also recommend you take the car off, put it on a rotisserie to do that. My car is not. So I think I'm gonna to have to separate it, do some spot weld drilling and separate this rear floor pan. And I might even have to separate the inner rockers on this. I don't know. I'm gonna to try to put it in there off a big piece of metal to try to put in there. And I'm doing it by myself with no fancy tools or anything. So I'm gonna let you know how it goes. So this is more of the floor, uh, just kind of a how-to. This one-piece floor, uh, let me count the pieces. It comes with a rear seat pan, a total front seat pan. It comes with one, two, three, four, five. It comes with all the braces. Uh, sometimes these rot out. It does come with these, uh, I don't even know what you call them. They're those, these two L braces that go up towards the firewall here. Uh, one and two down there. Uh, like I said, the floor pan plugs are oval and not kind of the rounder shape, so you can kind of tell that's a repop. I'm just doing this by myself, so I decided to cut it all apart. I know I said I was going to try it in one piece, but if it needs any kind of trimming, I'm just going to have a headache trying to cut it. So I've already cut the rear seat pan off. Now what I did for that is I drilled out all the spot welds, so I drilled from the top. I mean, you see all them little holes down there. So I drove from the top of the floor pan down, like you're sitting in it in the car. And I don't even know how many that is, probably 20 or 30. And then I drilled out more. I've already taken one of the rockers off. I know it's kind of dark, sorry about that. But uh, one rocker is on, I'm about to take that one off. I took the one rocker off up here. So I did drill out all of these spot welds up here. And each of these braces is welded to the rocker. So there are six spot welds on each of these braces. Now, some of these you can't get a spot weld cutter in, like these down here, The one I'll show you the one I haven't cut yet. So those are like welded, not spot welded. So what I'm gonna try to do, what I did with the other side, is I'm gonna, whoop, I'm gonna take my Sawzall, I'm gonna try to slip it in to this corner right here, or I'm gonna try to just cut it right here. Just cut it enough, because I tell you, I bought one of these. It's called like a seam breaker or something like that. And if I can just get enough of a crack in that weld, I can separate it. And you see this one here, they're, they're all welded. They're not, there's no spot welds in that last brace right there. Uh, the back brace for the rear seat pan was right there. Those are all spot welds. I drilled all those out with a spot weld cutter. So that one is pretty easy to get off. So you have one rear brace and it came off with the rear seat pan. So those five down there on that one and there were five on the other one, but I already took the rocker off. So uh, like those 20 or 30 there and then those five and the five on the other rocker will pull that rear seat pan off. 
Now, the rear seat pan is under this. So it's kind of wedged right in there. So if you don't have every single spot well drilled out, that rear seat pan will not come out of here. So it's kind of wedged in there. And I, once again, I use that seam breaker. Works wonders. But yeah, this is in my living room. It makes a lot of noise outside. I don't want the police call on me for making too much noise, but uh, I'll give more of an update when I get further along. Once I get the, this rocker off down here, I'm waiting on a uh, inner fender, inner wheel correction, inner rocker brace. Uh, I looked at it, it was too rotted. So I ordered a brand new one, I'm waiting on that. And when I get that brace in there, I'm gonna finish cutting out the inside of the car with the uh, with my grinder, and then I'm gonna set two rocker panels, and then I'm gonna set the rear seat pan, and then I'm gonna put this big old piece in here. But uh, so far, everything's looking good. Just wanted to let you guys know the parts and pieces that does come with this when you get a complete floor. It does come with everything, but it's way too big to put in there unless your car's off the frame and. If you're one person, it's pretty difficult as well. So I'll bring you back uh, once I make some more progress. All right, so just a little detour. Uh, you guys have probably seen this a bunch of times, but this is, why not do it again? So uh, I'm gonna drill this spot weld out. And so what I got is a center punch here. And I don't know if you can see that light up here so the spot welds I'm gonna punch it center punch it uh, right in the center of that spot weld so I'm gonna use this uh, this is a premium what is this Blair spot weld cutter I thought the case would be bigger look at that my whole hand just covers it uh, comes with one center punch well two actually and then it comes with three heads I've drilled probably 50 or so with this one head. It's getting pretty dull, uh, but it's still doing the trick. I did try some Harbor Freight ones that are like $3, three and a half bucks. Uh, once I drilled probably three or four, the teeth broke off of them. I did buy three or four of them and they got reversible heads on them. And I went through all three of them and broke all of them. And I've only used this one to drill most of this pan. So, this one does have kind of a drill bit on the end, I don't know if you can focus there, which helps when you center punch that hole because it's going to kind of drill in a little bit and if it doesn't, it'll just, the biggest problem with these is it's going to walk all over the place. So I just kind of, and it's got a little spring on it, you can see you push down on it, just springy. So I, I drill a little bit, let that drill bit work a little bit, then I push it down ever so slowly and then it helps from it walking off if you go real, real slow. Uh, once I get through, you kind of feel it get through the metal. I'll take this thing right here and I'll just stick it under there and I'll bang on it and pop it. You know, it, it's gonna not look very good. It might bend the metal a little bit, but that's what hammers are for and dollies and all that stuff. So I've never done this before. So this is kind of a novice. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it'll help you guys out, but uh, if you guys need to know anything else, just let me know and I'll do the best I can to help. So one of the tricks I learned, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five spot welds and then just a regular weld back there. So what I did that helped me out was I used the spot weld cutter and cut those five and then popped the panel out, which allowed me to get a sawzall blade in there. So what I did was I worked from the inside out and get that weld back there with the sawzall blade and cut out. So I just cut it out enough to pop it out with that seam cutter. So that's what I did. Hopefully it works for everybody else. So I didn't do any of the boring stuff, just tons of spot weld drilling. Uh, the rocker came off. So this is kind of a before and after. The after is on top and the before is on the bottom. So this is, looks all hacked up, but I took a, a grinder and ground that down straight. And then I took a 80 grit flap wheel. So I'm just waiting on some weld through primer to come, come in. That way I can prevent this from rusting. That's why I got these inside. 
So just kind of a before and after, because I'm gonna have to grind down them spot welds because I used a sawzall and kind of hacked it up, but all's good, I can fix it. Hey, I'm back. This is gonna be the, the last portion, I guess, of this video. I'm gonna think I'm gonna do it in two parts. So uh, part one is gonna be the like preparation of the floor pan once I got it and how I took it apart and stuff like that. And I think part two is gonna be me actually installing it because this video is gonna get pretty long if it's all one shot. So I'm done cutting. I've dressed all the rocker panels both of them uh, the rear seat pan is there and there's the front floor pan so this all came as one piece i've taken it all apart and just going to show you here real quick uh, if you want to wreck shop on a car this is pretty much all you need this is all i used uh, i kind of remodel houses as a side gig so i have these tools these battery operated tools already uh, so all the dewalt stuff i already have uh, what I bought, I already showed you, was that uh, Blair spot weld cutter, a center punch, that seam breaker, of course a hammer. Uh, I've used an air chisel to get the old floor out. And, of course, a shop light. Uh, that's Harbor Freight. It's working for me. Uh, but it's not the best of quality. And that air chisel, that air hammer, is also a Harbor Freight deal. Uh, I am not a professional. Uh, this is not my my primary job, so I'm, this is my first car I've ever done, so I'm just kind of learning as I go. Uh, I bought the rest of this stuff just for this car. Uh, Makita brand grinder. Only complaint I have there is it's a bit heavy. Uh, once you start grinding on stuff for a long time. Uh, the rut's on there right now is an 80 grit flap wheel. This right here is just a grinding disc to, I started with this to grind down the spot welds that I cut, and then I switched to the 80 grit flap wheel, like I said. And this here is just your standard, this is a Harbor Freight. I bought a pack of 10, because I didn't realize how fast I'd go through these. It's just a Harbor Freight, uh, just a cutoff wheel. So it doesn't sand or anything, just a cutoff wheel. So hopefully that just gives you the tools that you need to do this. It's not very many. Uh, the hard part's gonna be putting this thing back in, making sure it sits straight. Like I said, never done this before, so I'll just uh, kinda go over the mistakes and what I think. Uh, talk about safety for a minute. This thing's very sharp, so of course you gotta wear safety glasses, face shield. I didn't wear any long sleeves, so I have metal all over my arms, and you wanna wear gloves, because like I said, this thing very sharp so just be careful when you're dealing with all this stuff you don't want to end up cutting yourself end up in the er so next part of this video is going to be the installation so we'll see you when i start putting this thing in 